Council Faculty of uh, Medicine and staff in Obstetric and Gynecology Department in Dr. Sarjito Hospital in Yogyakarta. So, well, welcome to Dr. Ender. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, very good morning, everyone. Thank you for introducing me. Uh, today, I would like to present uh, what I'm concerned right now about the endometriosis. But I wanted to underline that this is actually the basic. I wanted to um, sharing with you all about the concept of the translational medicine. Why? Because actually, the one question that I would coming up is when you want to do the research is why you do the research. If I got this kind of the um, questions the couple years ago when I was still in undergraduate, maybe I just wanted to say that, okay, I'll do the research because I wanted to graduate. That's it. I will uh, finish my thesis and then I graduate and then I'm becoming the medical doctor. That's all. But look at what is the essential, what is uh, the meaning of the this research because basically when you already like uh, we already graduate and then we uh, start to building our career and then we try to also do the research because we wanted to do the next step of our career and then we can publish in the high impact journal is it the, your purpose or not but I wanted to underline that uh, basically the idea coming of the our research basically is basically on the uh, clinical setting because we talk about the health and pharmacy. Basically, we talk about the problem in the community, problem in the patient, problem in the clinical setting, and then we got the idea. After we got the idea, we wanted to do the research. We wanted to prove our hypothesis. We wanted to prove and give the evidence, and then after that, we wanted to translate. So basically, what we want to do by this research is not only just paper, because paper is nothing, but how we can implicate and give the implication of this result of the research to do back to the patients, and it will be useful. Not just your paper, not just your thesis, or not just in the journal, or just you can attend international conference or something. This is the I wanted to underline in this talk today. And to give the example I use because I'm uh, right now is a PhD student in Taipei Medical Student at Taipei Medical University and then currently also working in the Obstetric and Gynecology Universitas Gajah Mada, same with my friend uh, in the same department as well. And then this is the one example how we can uh, discover the endometriosis for diagnosing too. So before we go into the deeper discussion, I wanted to underline what is endometriosis. You can see this is the female reproductive system and it, this is the uterus. This is the uterus and that this is the ovary and this is the cervix and this is vagina. And if you look at the uterus, it consists of three layers, endometrium, myometrium and serous. And then what is uh, going on in the endometriosis is this layer, the endometrial layer, this tissue is going not in the right place, but it's going up because of the retrograde menstruations. So it can go to the fallopian tube, it can go to the ovary, or even like the peritoneal cavity, and 
It also can go to the pleura, pericardium, and last but not least, it can also go to the brain. So look at of this pathogenesis. As I mentioned before, the other one of the uh, theory is the basically from the Samson about the retrograde menstruation. So every month, we are as the woman, not for the men, just the woman. We got the menstruations, and then in the menstruation, the functional layer of the endometrium will be setting. And then it should be going down, right? Mm -hmm. But in this case, uh, the blood it will going up to the uh, another reproductive tract tra of the woman, going to follow to the fallopian, fallopian tube, and then ovary and another organ I mentioned before. And then because this is the tissue, but in the different place, in the not not in the right place, so they will induce our immune. And then it will be increased the cytokine and inflammatory um, cytokine or not inflammatory. And then also they want to survive, right? Because they want to grow up also in the, another place. So they will um, increase the vascular by the vasculogenesis and then growth factor to really they still can grow up in this place. And another reason that, uh, another theory, because this is not just the theory, so it's on also uh, not only by the, this kind of the physical, but also it can cause by the immunology, hereditary, and environment. And basically, there are many symptoms of the patient who come with the, uh, endometriosis. First is the chronic pelvic pain, Dysmenorrhea, painful during menstruation, dyspareunic, painful during intercourse, and dysthesia during constipation and infertility. But if you look at of the uh, prevalence, they coming to the doctor because there's two of the reasons, infertility and pain. And this is the staging based on the American Society of Reproductive Medicines. And after we know about the pathogenesis, we try to get the treatment, right? The treatment basically this we uh, already know about the endometriosis and this is actually hormonal dependent, estrogen dependent. So we wanted to cut off this uh, estrogen because estrogen actually have the function to uh, make the endometrium grow up. So if there is this high, so the endometriosis tissue will be more and more. So the treatment is wanted to cut off the estrogen in endometriosis. And then this is the, again, actually not only medications, but also we have the uh, surgical to remove because all, almost, not almost, but many patients as have the recurrent. So we not can just like give the medication, just give the pill, but also we need to do the surgery to remove all the tissue. And then um, if you look at the prevalency, one of the 10 women caught this kind of disease. I can say that this is actually not the threatening disease, but this is altering disease. Threatening, it means like it can make die, even though there are many, uh, some, some uh, report it can from endometriosis can translate to the cancer, but still not under, yeah, remains unclear. And then, but this is altering disease. Why? Because people come, women come because of the infertility. So this is uh, really the problem of the patients with the endometriosis. <coughs> and look at this is the prevalency. It's very high, especially in USA and the Asia. Even the Indonesia and Taiwan also high. And they coming, uh, actually this disease can be in the reproductive age after we got the menstruation and the before we got the uh, menopause. And then the number, is right now increasing, yes. And because I'm also right now uh, working in the TMU hospital in the Center for Reproductive Medicine, if we look at of the prevalence, the why the people, why the woman coming to the infertile clinic is because mostly because of endometriosis. So we concerned about this one because of this phenomenon. And this is the, also make the economic burden. 
And if you look at the problem right now, endometriosis, how the doctor can see this is, this woman have the endometriosis. If I look you, all the women here, I don't know, you got the menstrual, uh, sorry, you got the endometriosis or not. But because um, in the survey of completed around 7,000 women with endometriosis, 65% were misdiagnosed with another diagnosis, and 46, at least they have to go to the doctor five times after they know, they realize that they got menstrual, and they got endometriosis. And then it made the delay between the time of the onset of the disease to the uh, diagnosis is around 6 or 11. So this is still the problem. We cannot see like just symptom because many women have the symptom like this menor. Every month we got the menstruations and we feel pain. But what's kind of the pain? This is still subjective, right? And then we can do the vaginal examinations, but it's also not in, still insufficient. And then we can do the ultrasonography, USG, vaginal USG. But we cannot do in another like peritoneal endometriosis or even like deep infiltrating endometriosis. We cannot exactly that they have. But for the ovarian endometriosis, we still can uh, know they have or not. And then the one and only the gold standard of this disease is by laparoscopy. We know the laparoscopy is the surgical. So it's very, very expensive and it's very invasive. So this is the problem of the patients with endometriosis. We still have the gap. This is very high prevalence, have the impact to infertility. And then we just have the gold standard to diagnose by laparoscopy. So we still have the gap. How we can diagnose in the very simple tool, very uh, easy tool and not expensive to get this woman get the endometriosis. We, so we wanted to discover the biomarker. But when we wanted to discover a biomarker, it's not that easy because we have to do the research from the basic, very basic. We can use the sample from the patients and then look at the even gene expression or protein or another microRNA or something, the biomarker in this uh, disease. And then we have to do step by step. It's not like that easy we find this kind of the biomarker to endometriosis. And another problem is because this is the inflammatory disease and this is very invasive, so many uh, cytokine, many uh, gene will involve all this kind. So we cannot do just by one biomarker, but we have to have the final biomarker to resolve this problem. And then right now, the paper is going, yeah very increasing about the number they're talking about the endometriosis or even the biomarker of endometriosis. And then they are already, we can see there are many kind of the stuff, but until now they're still not convincing enough to get this kind of, okay, this one, can we can predict this one. This, no, it's still in, yeah, still not convincing enough. And then we need to the framework how we can do the research that really can dissolve this problem. So we need the sample of the patient. We collect the sample of the patient. We need the consent of the patient because we wanted to do the research. It's not easy because this is the sample from the patient, from the human tissue. So we have to really uh, make good communication with the patient so we can get this uh, tissue to do the research to resolve the problem. And then we have to have the good record about this patient so we can get the biosignature of this disease, about this disease. So we, because until now the pathogenesis is still remains unclear. And then this is the SOP to do the from the biobank and then we have to have the got the sample population with the large sample and then we do the clinical test because after we do the in the bands, in the research bands, in the laboratory, we have to really make it the proven this hour is not only in the bands but also how when we implicate, how we can implicate this result to the large populations not only in Taiwan, not only in Indonesia, not only in the US, but also worldwide, how we can, in, yeah, 
and we get this result to the worldwide. So in 2008, we are in TMU uh, Hospital. We finally uh, find and discover the alpha-1 antitrypsin as the biomarker in endometriosis, and we got the, uh, not we actually, this is my professor, this one. This one is my professor, and uh, he got the invention of this uh, biomarker, and then actually this is still not enough, and now I'm doing the uh, investigation for the another gene. We found the five genes because this is not the invention yet, so we still cannot publish the result. But I wanted to underline in this um, 15 minutes, what I'm, uh, I was talking on is like, uh, we got the idea from the patients. This is the problem for the patients. How we can solve the problem from the patient, we translate to the banks, we translate to the research. By research, we wanted to do the, to resolve the problem to the patient, and then we're coming back to the patients. This is actually what I want to, this is the one sentence that I want to underline in this um, presentation. This is what just the conclusion. There are the high prevalence. We have the problem of this one because we just have the um, laparoscopy as done uh, as a diagnostic tool, and then we wanted to have this the gap between the problem and also in the research. How we can translate our result in the research back to the patient, back to the clinical setting, and back to the community. Thank you. Uh, this is all my presentation. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dr. Linda. So, is there any question? Assalamualaikum yeah. warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm Krishna Ranga Permana from Medical School of Brawijaya University. Uh, first of all, I am very interested with your presentation because I think I would like to join to obstetric uh, gynecology department too. Uh, some, uh, in your presentation, they have said that uh, you use the alpha-1 antitoxin as a biomarker. Uh, I, I have known some biomarker for endometrial uh, endometriosis, so, such as PADF and annexin and such as uh, the combination with high sensitivity uh, exceed the 90 percent. Uh, I want to I want to ask uh, how much how much the sensitivity and specificity of antitrypsin and how much if the if it's combined about the fragment and particular. And I want to and the second one is uh, in such condition uh, this biomarker rise in the endometrial cancer. Uh, I want to ask if if we get uh, endometriosis and endometrial cancer in same time, uh, how how can we differentiate it? Thank you. Uh, is, is it the biomarker for the endometrial cancer or the endometriosis? If we get the both of those diseases in same time. Okay, thank you very much. As I mentioned before in the slide, there are many, many uh, um, discovering something about the biomarker and about the uh, FVGF and then annexin. The all is about the uh, how they can survive. This is growth factor, the vascular genesis, and then hey, how because this is actually from the uterus and then going up to the another place. How they can move from the uh, this one side to another side. So actually, uh, for the uh, alpha one antitrypsin, we got the eighty percent for eighty five percent for sensitivity and ninety four for the specificity. So we still have the lack of this one. This is still have the gap of this one. But I already mentioned before when we have uh, something to discover. Uh, the one thing that I learned is about we have the invention. So this is kind of basically from our result, and then how we can translate. We right now currently we uh, make the chip. So because for the uh, FGF annexin and the uh, MC like the the five gene, they found the five gene, and this is actually not the uh, novel they found because they found from the 
Previous biomarker, previous founder, for, um, discovering by another researcher. So they do the multivariate analysis. Many, they, they just write the many, and then do the analysis, the multivariate analysis, and then they got this uh, specificity and sensitivity. And then for the endometrial um, cancer, right? Yeah, because uh, some cases they reported from the endometriosis, they can um, change or change or how to transform. Yeah, transform to the cancer. This is because actually the endometriosis is likely have the same characteristic with a cancer, but different because they're not invasive. They can like the cancer that very very malignant. This is just like they grow to another, but not invasive and malignant. And then how we can make it different, like we have the certain uh, particular of gene that may be like apoptosis or something, and maybe don't regulate it in the cancer. And also we can try to make it different because currently we have the biobank tissue, so we can make a difference. What is the characteristic between the endometriosis tissue and then between the endometrial cancer. So we have to make it different, but this is, we have to prove it because uh, I don't know, I have not uh, data yet. So I cannot just saying this kind of, it still uh, be need to, to prove this kind of the statement. So we can make it different between this one and this one and what is the kind of the change or biomarker that growing up of this kind of the disease. It's okay? okay. So, uh, because the time is up, so we will move to another presentation. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, please uh, link the presentation because I will give the certificate and the gift. Invited speaker is Amna. Um, will give the. <laughs> so we will move to. The uh, next presentation, uh, I will call Muklas Jamal Musaho, Yuliana Farka, Fir Firdarian Afriana, and Ardining Nuriani, with the title of Cytoxic Activity and Aptosis Induction of Leaves and Fruit Extract of Screw Pine, Pandanus Tectorius to T47D cell line. Uh, please welcome to the stage. While waiting at uh, the next presentation after this will be Ardining Nuriani, Astiti Wijianti, Artik Kusmianti, Yeki Asipa Westry, and Rizki Tokuyani. Please, please prepare for the next one. Thank you very much.
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, Honorable Dr. Endah Ramawati and all participants, good morning. Thank you for joining me here today. My name is Juliana. I represent my team for presentation. Uh, my team are Muklis Jamal Musahole, Firdaria Arfriana, and I'm Ardani Nuriani. I will present about cytotoxic activity and apoptosis induction of leaves and fruit extract of screw pine pandanus tectorius to T47D cell line. We are from Faculty Biology, Universitas Gajah Mada. Uh, introduction. Uh, what is cancer? Cancer is complex disease that can cause death to the sufferer. T47D cells are continuous cell line which isolate from tumor tissue of breast doctor. The treatment to cure breast cancer uh, use chemotherapeutic agents. Uh, chemotherapeutic agents don't only attack cancer cells but also normal cells. Uh, and then the previous research from Mulia Proviro and Astirin, Pandanus conoideus, fruit on red and yellow variety from Papua are promising a source of bio bio bioactivity compound, including anti cancer agents. Uh, why we choose screw pine? Because <coughs> Indonesia has many potential anti cancer herbs. One of them is screw pine, Pandanus tectorius that is abundant but unutilized yet on medical importance in Yogyakarta. And, and then chemical compound of plants in the same genera is possible to have similar content and function. Uh, Pandanus condoinius, simil similar genera with Pandanus tectorius. As preliminary and screening test, Use cytotoxic activity and apoptosis induction measurement. This research was aimed to study the cytotoxic and apoptosis induction activity of the extract of the leaf and fruit of screw pine on T470 cells. Material method we can see about first plant material sampling and then Extraction, TLC assay, MTT assay, and apoptosis assay, then data analyze. Plant material extraction, leaves and fruit were collected from Kukuk Beach in Gunung Kidul, daerah istimewa Yogyakarta. Maceration method, leaves and fruit powder were extracted by N. Hexan, ethanol, chloroform, and aquades independently. And we can see leaves dry, fruit dry, powder, and extraction. The LCSA leaves and fruit extract were fractioned by thin layer chromatography and detected secondary metabolite, alkaloid, flavonoid, and tannin. We can see the LC plate, solvent, and glass. Cytoxic assay by MTT method there were four variables that consist of cell control, solvent control, treatment group, positive control, then plate well assessed by ELISA reader, and then calculated by inhibition percentage, cells control ARPS minus treatment ARPS divided cell control ARPS multiplies 100%. Aptosis assay by double staining method. Aptosis, uh, sorry. Potential extract based on cell toxic assay were assessed for apoptosis induction. Uh, group variable of this research were cells control, solvent control, treatment group, positive control. Uh, decide. Yes, because the data is not enough. So we decide to
Uh, my name is Dendi from Bolivia University. Uh, actually, uh, there's kind of same cell cell between the normal cell and the cancer cell. Is it possible that this uh, this extract is also destroying the normal cell itself? Because the, actually, the, uh, anti-cancer drugs are always chasing on the DNA strand. That, so is it possible that this also destroying the normal cell? Okay, thank you for the question. As far as I know, that uh, uh, the extra still possible uh, to uh, to destroy for normal cells. So, uh, in this research, we just use uh, cancer cell, uh, cancer cell line, uh, especially, and um, for the further research, maybe we can. Uh, to for in vitro research and from the research we can um, look the extra um, extra effect of the normal cells maybe for the um, another organ or tissue like that. Okay. Uh, of course, any natural compound is have potency to destroy the normal cell and it will be good if we can decide between the cell line and the normal cell but in this case the resources is limited so uh, we haven't detected in the normal cell but I have done a drug clinical study using mice but not use the time but uh, use a sperm uh, compared with the in vitro and normal using in vitro tests like that. Okay, it's okay. Um, excuse me, Miss. What is your name and where you come from? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. My name is Adeline Mulyani. I belong to the neighborhood. Oh, okay. Yes. Then. I come okay. from Faculty of Biology. Thank you very much. So, is there any question? If there is no question, thank you very much for the presentation. So we move on to another presentation with Arlani Noriani, Hastiti Wijaya, Atik Kusmiati, Yekti Asipur Pur Westeri, and Rizky Topriani with the title of the research. Good. Okay. Uh, here, why I use orchid as uh, the model? Because orchidaceae family has a youth member in a kingdom of plantae consists of. 850 genera and over than 30,000 species. Orchid is famous because of its beauty and especially used as ornamental plant and also consumed as food and also used as traditional medicine, especially in China, Japan, Europe, and also Africa. Orchid uh, as traditional medicine is believed can cure like tuberculosis and ne uh, neuronal diseases and also for uh, repair infertility and also here in our project the important is as anti cancer. The most used uh, orchid as traditional medicine is from Dendrobium genus because uh, some of research provide that Dendrobium consists of polysaccharide and polyphenol, alkaloid and also terpenoid. Next. And Dendrobium could inhibit some of cell cancer like sarcoma, leukemia, and also human hepatoma, and also 
uh, Muscatilian, one of compound from Denopium Lodigaceae, can suppress tumor angiogenesis since angiogenesis in uh, one of the most important factor in cancer disease. Most of study about anti-cancer in dendrobium cancer in cell growth inhibition. So, uh, in my pro in my project, the focus is on the not just on the cell growth inhibition, but also in apoptotic activity. The cell growth inhibition and apoptotic activity are done on HeLa cells. There is the cervical cancer cell line and anti-angiogenesis activity. And why we use dendrobium chromenatum, or also called as pigeon orchid, because this species is very abundant in tropical country like in Indonesia and especially in Yogyakarta. So the dendrobium sample is collected from the Yogyakarta and its surrounding area in April and the plant extract was made using maceration method in 96% ethanol. Uh, in this research, as I already uh, said, focus on cell growth inhibition assay, apoptotic assay, and angiogenesis assay using chorioelanthoid membrane. This is uh, the research design for cell growth inhibition assay. In this assay, uh, we divide the dendrobium chrominatum sample in three parts. There are whole plant, leaves, and pseudo bulb. Next. And the cell growth inhibition was detected using MTT assay, and the optical density was determined using ELISA reader. And the cell growth inhibition was calculated using uh, this formula the optical density of medium control minus optical density of the treatment and uh, divide with optical density of medium control multiplied by 100%. Based on the result in cell growth inhibition, we get the result that the leaves extract has uh, the lowest inhibition concentration 50 so we use the leaf extract to detect the apoptosis. The apoptosis was uh, detected using double staining method using ethidium bromide and acridine orange staining and uh, the slide observed under fluorescent microscope and we can see that the viable cell will give the bright green uh, color and the apoptotic cell with chromatin condensation will give the orange color and the amount of apoptotic cell will represent as a percent. And then the anti-angiogenesis activity also done in leaves ethanolic extract. We use embryonated egg of chicken and uh, Inductor of angiogenesis, we use basic fibroblast growth factor. Next. Uh, firstly, the eggs were incubate, incubated until the age of 9 to 10 days or at uh, 90, uh, 39 degrees. And then uh, the eggs is implanted implant with uh, like like above research design and then the eggs were incubated again for 72 hours next after the of 14th day the eggs 
were removed to the refrigerator for one day to inactivate the embryo metabolism and to freeze the blood capillaries. And then a blood vessel on the chorioallantoic membrane detach and then stick in the filter paper and fix in 4% formaldehyde and then uh, we can examine the newly uh, blood newly formed blood vessel using stereo microscope. Angiogenesis formation uh, was calculated as follows. The average number of the blood vessel on the treatment group divides average number of blood vessel on BFGF control multiply 100% and angiogenesis inhibition represent as 100% minus uh, the percent of angiogenesis formation. Next. Uh, and then the data were analyzed. Next. Uh, based on the result, cell growth inhibition of ethanolic extract of dendrobium chromenatum on HeLa cell soap, the three uh, part whole plant, pseudobulb, and leaf soap, and the pattern based on concentration. That means the higher concentration will give the higher cell growth inhibition. And based on the IC50 values, it shows that leaves have the lowest uh, IC50 and then uh, the highest is whole plant extract. Next. Next. And uh, because of the um, extract of dendrobium chromenatum have a potential in cytotoxicity, so we continue our study uh, to check whether the apo uh, whether the cell death mechanism is through apoptosis, apoptosis or not. But uh, the result showed that the extract just uh, low uh, apoptotic level below uh, than 30 percent so we cannot say that this extract is uh, induced cell death through this mechanism compared to the doxorubicin doxorubicin is one of anti-cancer drug with uh, induced cell death from apoptosis it's a very different result okay uh, this is uh, the figure about the normal cell with a bright green color and uh, the apoptotic cell with the orange color. Next. And uh, because of there is no induction in apoptosis, so we continue our study to check whether the mechanism is through angiogenesis process or not. Next, and the results show that uh, the FGF, eh, sorry, the extract uh, give the higher, uh, give the high anti-angiogenesis activity. Next. Okay, next. So, uh, our conclusion is ethanolic extract of dendrobium chromenatum has potency to inhibit the growth of HeLa cell and <coughs> the growth inhibition wasn't through apoptosis induction, especially in leaf extract since uh, we test in leaf extract. And uh, leaf ethanolic extract of dendrobium chromenatum on chorioallantoic membrane could inhibit angiogenesis. So uh, maybe uh, we can say that it still need a further investigation to uh, prove that ethanolic extract of dendrobium chromenatum 
have a potency to develop as anti-cancer agent. Next. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for the presentation. So, is there any question? Oh, maybe you can stand up. Okay. My name is Omar Iqbal from Bioprof Engineering Defense in Indonesia. And to that, actually, I'm also conducting a research about apoptosis agent, but from different resources. What I want to ask here is about the resource availability because you said previously that uh, this market is quite a billion in Indonesia, but um, I just want to know about how, how many of plantation of this dendrobium in Indonesia because I'm just, uh, and is it applicable for industrial uses because uh, of course dendrobium or orchid usually just used as a different plant in Indonesia but, so I'm afraid that it will be competing with your idea because it's quite, it must be quite expensive because orchid, you know, it's, yeah, it's quite expensive also. Yeah, just, just it, thank you so much. Okay, uh, that's a very nice question. Yes, of course, but uh, the Nobium Luminato is quite easy to plan, so maybe if this plan is approved, useful as medicine, in my opinion, uh, regarding to the conservation also, we can um, make like a garden to plant this uh, dendrobium, just like uh, maybe in China or in Taiwan, I think the uh, medical company, they use uh, like a field to grow the plant that we need for the uh, medicine product. And how about the price? Because I don't know what the price is something because I'm not a plant. Okay. Uh, maybe. Okay. Maybe dendrobium chromenatum is not uh, so expensive because it could be categorized as wild uh, orchid because uh, this orchid are just flower one day and the flower is uh, like this very very tiny flowers and so. Not many people interested in plant this dendrobium, uh, different from maybe palenopsis, which have beautiful flower or so. Uh, my name is from Bajaj University. The problem that still remains on herbal medicine is it's always consists of so many compounds, right? Yes. And is there any specific compound that? Uh, going slightly to take the HeLa cell, and is it possible if you only use that compound? And what is the use of other compound on the extract? Thank you. It was very uh, nice question, and actually, uh, that is the next project. Oh. Since this is uh, the first time project, and as we know, there is still no research in dendrobium chrominatum as anti-cancer, so we, uh, re we investigate the potency and we already get the result. The next step is uh, we want to isolate the compound and then we will to test in maybe not just in HeLa cell but in uh, various cancer cell line like that and also maybe doing uh, some preclinical study like that so we can uh, get the more completely data. Is there any question? Okay, so thank you very much. So give the big class. So the next one is with Mokhat Aldis Rusliandi and Imade Binar Andromeda. Is there anyone? The name that I mentioned. Also, oh, okay. Uh, be, before we move on, there is a technical problem. So if I call your name, you can come up to the stage and put the flash disk uh, and bring the flash disk and give to uh, Miss Ama. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So uh, we will move on to the next one with Ayu Sadi, Weni Artanti, Nisman, and Purwanta with the title Effect of Short Educational Movie on the Increasing Knowledge of Breastfeeding Management in Bakiro Gondo Kusuma, Yogyakarta Mun Mun Municipality Indonesia. Okay. We will welcome you to here and please give the big applause. So, uh, because the previous one is not there, so the presentation with the name Muhammad Iqbal, Yuki Deslandini and Muhammad Haslan uh, can be come forward in the last session before the last break. Okay, thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Uh, my name is Ayu Sandi. I'm from School of Nursing, Faculty of Medicine, Universitas Gajah Mada. And today I would like to present our study result. It's about effect of short educational movie on the increasing knowledge of the breastfeeding management in Bajiro Gondokusuman, Yogyakarta Province in Indonesia. So the background of this research is we have known uh, that breastfeeding has so many benefits, not only for children, but also for mothers. We have known that for children, it could increase the autoimmune, it could make them uh, more active, healthier, and for mothers, it could prevent the hemorrhage after giving birth, it could ensure the closeness between children and mother, and for some of us who already become a mother, for some of us who already become a breastfeeding mother, it could make us slimmer. Okay. Uh, that's why uh, Indonesia has issued a government regulation about exclusive breastfeeding in 2004. So all babies under six months old have to breastfeed exclusively. And so the mothers have to give breast milk until they are two years old. Of course, a uh, accompanied by appropriate food. Uh, but this regulation is not accompanied by a good practice because uh, in practice we still have low exclusive breastfeeding rate based on UNICEF data. It's only approximately 32% in Indonesia. Uh, this low exclusive breastfeeding rate in Indonesia is affected by so many factors including deficient mother's knowledge. Uh, we still have uh, another, uh, another factors, but this one is the, is the basic one. So, uh, as uh, health professionals, uh, we expect that health education in form of short educational movie could increase the mother's knowledge about breastfeeding management. So, it could uh, increase their awareness it could increase their motivation to give breast milk to breastfeed their babies. And so this research uh, has the aim to identify the effect of short educational movie on the increasing knowledge of breastfeeding management. Uh, this result was conducted in Yogyakarta on February 2011. It involved 37 participants. Uh, the participants were purposefully chosen. So they are breastfeeding mothers who had babies from uh, newborn until 12 months old. They have to be in good health condition. They have to be able to write and read and agree to participate in this study by uh, signing informed consent. And we have an exclusion criteria. So uh, they shouldn't be uh, health workers and health professionals. And this research uh, was a pre-experimental study using one group retest and process design. 
So first, we we uh, we have a questionnaire that had to be filled in by participants. After that, we give health education with short educational movie, and at the end, we uh, they have to fill in the same questionnaire. The material um, and person who delivered the message. Uh, are we are we like a, are we as a health professionals? could make the material understandable and also the media I would like to underline the media uh, because uh, we have two aspects of breastfeeding that not different significantly it could be the media itself because we know that audiovisual is a sequential media so once we, uh, once we uh, don't pay attention we will lose the keyword and it will be hard to understand the next message but then, the media also, if we use the right choice of media and also the interesting package. So in this research, uh, we try to uh, make the movie, not only just a movie, but we, we have some animation and, ex and etc. So we hope that it influences the delivery meaning of the message. Uh, and in the end, it will increase the retention of the knowledge. Yeah. Uh, in this study, we use uh, audiovisual media. We use movie <coughs> uh, because we consider it to be right choice to deliver message uh, because it involves more senses of subject. Not only uh, we could see the message, but we also could hear the message. And it's also providing skills and real life situation because mothers will learn how to breastfeed effectively from. How to? How do they sit? How do they, for example, like uh, how do the baby suck uh, in the right way and many other things? So the information can be simply understood. And in the end, we hope that uh, it stimulates uh, like a better learning process. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's all of my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Ayu. So, is there any question? for a very good question. Uh, <clears throat> actually, this is my thesis and graduate. So, uh, in, in, making, in making the audio, audiovisual media itself, uh, uh, we, we didn't use uh, like a real person, we didn't use like a real scenario. We just downloaded some videos from YouTube and then we, we tried to give it some animation also. But uh, in next project, uh, we would like to make it like a more professional one. Uh, we would like it uh, with the real actors, with the real scenario, so uh, it will be better and more good looking, I think. And uh, next project, uh, I think that the method that we would like to improve, because uh, here the mothers only, uh, only sit and watch the movie, uh, but they, they didn't do like a practice. So we would like to for next, uh, after they watch the movie, we want to like uh, accompany them. Uh, they they have to practice with their babies, and and uh, yeah, yeah. we we accompany them, we we, we guide them. Uh, do they already uh, do they already show 
a good technique based on the video or not and yeah we give like a feedback for them and uh, when it succeed not only in Yogyakarta but uh, we would like to make it like in several provinces in Indonesia thank you is it okay okay uh, the first question is there is only video on this presentation, right? Uh, uh, there is only video on the presentation. There is no one presenting in front of them between the pre and the post test. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then the second one is: Is this video is applicable for all educational level? I mean, on the small town, there is a lower educational level. Is it possible to increase that knowledge? Too. Thank you. Thank you very much for the question. Mr. Diddy. Mr. Diddy. Uh, okay, uh, before we, <clears throat> in the questionnaire actually, we have already uh, listed like a demographic data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, so we know like uh, <clears throat> the, the age and also the level of education. And we have already like a uh, used statistic, statistical method to identify if this demographic data uh, influence the the, the the process of health education and or, uh, and in, uh, if it's influence the result of the intervention itself but uh, fortunate, fortunately not so it, uh, it didn't influence the result of health education so the the result of health education purely from the the, the artificial media but uh, I think that we need to improve the narration. You mean narration in the in the movie, so it is understandable. For example, in a breastfeeding production, uh, we cannot deny that there are some medical terms. For example, uh, when the baby sucks the breast, so uh, it it will give signal to the brain's mother. The brain's mother will produce oxytocin hormone, prolactin hormone, and etc. etc. So. We have some of mothers that are not not in senior high school even. Maybe they they they, they hard to 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 understand uh, what it's what what is prolactin oxytocin what is hormone looks like like, like this. So I think that uh, it is a challenge that we could make the narration to be simpler and understandable. Yeah, I think so. Is it okay? One more. Uh, did you just compare between the real life presentation and the audio pres audio video presentation? Which one is has the more significant effect? Uh, I mean real life situation. Uh, I mean real life presentation. There is someone standing there and give the presentation to them. You just like uh, play the video, right? Uh, uh, we we uh, we played the video and we provide like a question and answer session after that. Uh -huh. So if they missing something in the video or they, they didn't understand something, they could ask directly and we will give answers to them. Mm -hmm. But uh, here we think that uh, like a visual media give like a more interesting package and uh, it's not a boring one because we know that uh, if somebody just stand here and uh, they cannot give like a good first impression at once, so it will fail at the next minute.
uh, it's common in the positive research, but uh, it's, this is a comment, from, not, not, not a question, but thank you. Do you want to add something? Do you respond to his suggestion? No? Okay. Is there any question? No. Okay, just one more question. Last more question, can? Your name and please turn on. Uh, yeah, it's about the number of the participants. Um, actually, we have uh, like a this is bachelor is like a village, so we have actually 102 mothers, but we also have like an inclusion and exclusion criteria, and uh, we also have like a purposive purposive sampling. Um, so actually, some of them uh, has already. Uh, in a in a inclusion and exclusion criteria, but uh, like uh, when 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 the health education was conducted, there was only 37 participants who who could participate in the health education. Uh, like uh, it's because like uh, I, I, I didn't remember. Uh, I think that there there is an event uh, like a uh, in similar time with our research. So. Yeah, I think it is the like uh, uh, obstacles in our research. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, I think the Q and A session is finished. <laughs> no, it's kind of because of time. So thank you very much for you. Give the big applause. So uh, we will next. I will move to the next question. To present about our paper, and our paper is with the title of Revolutionary Therapy for Breast Cancer by using tetrodotoxin extracted from the mascot pufferfish atroton diadematus. My name is Krishna Raga Permanat and this is my partner Dedi Dwi Septian and this paper is supervised by Prof. Dr. Dr. M. Rashid Indra MS and Dr. Fiana Noramawati SPPA Consultant. And next, we begin with the pre cancer definition. Based on the World Health Organization 2013, breast cancer is a top cancer in women but in developed and developing country that form in breast tissue. And then, based on the next, based on the Ministry of Health Indonesia data, there is uh, 10,000 patients 10,000 patients in Indonesia. So it means one from uh, five the malignancy in women is a breast cancer. And it has been predicted that in, in the year of 2014, it will be four, four times higher. So the breast cancer will, is the silent disease. And then we move to the pathogenesis of the breast cancer. Uh, we know that every cell in the body has uh, the gate. For this gate, sodium channel is one of the gate. And sodium is one of important molecule for the metabolism cell. And in breast cancer, uh, it also there is uh, FGSC. And FGSC control the cell integrity and effectiveness of the breast cancer. So, and in breast cancer also, there is a specific uh, VGSC type. And we can see uh, the type of VGSC for the breast cancer is NIV 1.5 and NIV 1.7. With the NIV 1.5 has the 80% and the rest is 1.7. But unfortunately, uh, uh, there are some treatment for breast cancer, but unfortunately, uh, there are 40% of uh, drug resistant in therapy for breast cancer. Uh, those, those resistance is caused by the PGPRP glycoprotein. So, 
uh, PGP and VGSC will be our main focus in this paper. Next. As I talk to you that there are some uh, current, tri current treatment for the breast cancer. But uh, those treatment can bring the side effects. Uh, we we can see that from the chemotherapy or drugs uh, treatment, it breaks the resistance and it only has a low specificity and low sensitivity. And it's rather expensive and it brings the infertility for the patients. And radiation, the radiation is not very, it's not that specific because it also damage the normal cell and it can cause the bulk fall bulk in the patient by the hair loss. Okay, next. So the question is remind is uh, how to kill this cancer cell without causing harmful effect and we can bypass the some resistance. So we combine the concept of medical science, biomolecular and natural substance and based on the epidemiology and cost effective, we move to the natural substance we call the tetrodotoxin. And then uh, we will discuss what, why, and how is tetrodotoxin. We start from what is tetrodotoxin. Uh, tetrodotoxin is a natural substance that abundant in skin of mass superface, especially species Arotron diadematus. And next, why we choose tetrodotoxin? Uh, first of all, there are three main reasons that we choose tetrodotoxin. First of all, is natural substance, so it can be actually extracted and afforded from the musket puffer face. The second one is it's specific and sensitive uh, to kill the breast cancer cell without affecting the normal cell uh, by blocking the VGAC and FV 1.5 and 0.57 which not have been is very, it's only in the breast cancer and it prevents the metastatic process without affecting other normal cell. And the third one is liver body resistant. Uh, fortunately, uh, that X also has the ability the, to block the PGP expression. Next. And then, how to make the tetrodotoxin itself? First of all, we prepare the skin of Max Paperface Atrolum diadematus, and then we acidify with metatol extract solution according to the method of Kawabata. And then, we boil for 10 minutes and let it cool with centrifuge air. <laughs> Uh, 1,000 rotten per minute for 3 to 5 minutes and we get the spermatin containing solution and we stay at in minus 4 degrees celsius and we and then we get tetrodotoxin and how it works how tetrodotoxin works tetrodotoxin has the ability to bind directly the site of VGSC of NAV 1.5 and 1.7 specific for breast cancer cells and then, so it can reduce the NA plus uh, movement in and out. We know that NA plus, uh, as I told that, it has the function for the metabolism and cell integrity in breast cancer. So if we can block the NA, NA plus movement in and out of the cell, so it will destroy the cell integrity and kill the breast cancer cell with specificity and uh, sensitively. So, and then, uh, as I told to you, that 40% uh, resistance it's in the breast cancer case, it's quite high. And, and unfortunately, the tetrodotoxin ha has an ability to bypass the drug system by the body, by our body. It's by to inhibit PGP. PGP is the main cause of body resistance to some drugs. So by reducing PGP expression, it can uh, prevent the body response to make it some resistance. So estetrodotoxin will be the efficient drug for breast cancer. Next. And tetrodotoxin versus previous present and therapy. Okay, so we move to the, the conclusion. Next. Uh, we see that it's the comparison between the uh, preface therapy and tetrodotoxin. While the preface one is expensive and tetrodotoxin is cost effective and is to afford because it's natural substance. And uh, the preface one is, has a higher side effect while the tetrodotoxin more specific and more sensitive 
or we can say that it's, it is low minimal side effect and the third one is low sensitivity and specificity for the previous ones while the the tetrodoxin has the higher one the last one is is to to be resistant because of pgp but the tetrodoxin has the ability to bypass the pgp expression next uh, we not we are not stop we don't stop until this presentation only uh, we have the plan that uh, this paper will bring will bring will bring to the biomolecular and physiology laboratory and we have uh, had some cooperative uh, with some pharmacological factory to to do to be to make this paper to be done so can enter the clinical stage as soon as possible. Thank you. That's all our presentation. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much. So, is there any question? question first of all I wanna I wanna answer the first question uh, yes all the all of the cancer is about the apoptosis process but apoptosis itself has many intervention pathway one of the pathway is uh, via uh, voltage gate sodium channel yeah so uh, my my team is uh, think about how to the intervention to one of the pathway of the apoptosis so we choose one of those is voltage gate sodium channel and it's my answer it is related to the your second question uh, first of all uh, I don't think to make some uh, buffer, uh, much one for for paper piece uh, because uh, actually I just want to get the substance tetrodotoxin via maybe other people or other other uh, paper piece factory producing. Is it already established? Already <laughs> no, no. I mean, like, uh, we told you about the tetrodotoxin of our face. Yes, indeed, uh, our face is tetrodotoxin, but we could use uh, pure purified tetrodotoxin, which is uh, available on many pharmacological companies. Oh, so you're focusing here on the substance, not in the raw material, right? Yes. Okay, uh, thank you. My name is Richard from TMU. And uh, thank you very much for your call, Mr. Jackson, for your presentation. Uh, I have uh, two questions actually. First, uh, I want to know the, your comment uh, with this PGP expression in cancer stem cell, because we know that there's a uh, small subset of tumor cells that have the stem cell uh, properties uh, is uh, mentioned as the, the, the responsible cell that will uh, play the uh, resistance. And the second one is the uh, we know that this uh, breast cancer, and as well as many other types of cancer, uh, we should uh, categorize based on the immun immunogenotypes. So, for example, it's uh, tri triple negative breast cancer or something else. So, I want to know the, the effect of this tetrodotoxin to this uh, different immunogenotype. Yeah. For example, is that will be 
more uh, effective to be used in a triple negative breast cancer or something you, you, you already know the answer? Thank you. the first question uh, the BGP expression uh, based on the journal based on the journal it's not it's uh, I want to say to be honest it's not uh, clearly yet BGP caused the some resistance but the journal state in 90% of resistance it is encoded uh, it's, it it encodes BGP expression but but we think reverse reverse reverse. Uh, we still not sure yet that PGP cause the resistance. Even though all of the resistance encode encodes the PGP. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, but based on the data, we 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 try to we try to find what is uh, there must be a causal a causal thing that in some extent. Uh, and only one substance that encode in uh, that resistance is PGP. So uh, we conclude that PGP causes the sub-resistance. Uh, sub okay. Uh, yeah. And the second one is uh, yes, the African cell as the type of its own cut. Of on kind, uh, but uh, we intervene the protest gate channel uh, as we saw that uh, many cancers saw the some character characteristic of PGSE uh, for breast cancer 1.5, uh, but uh, in other cancer there's there's also 1.5. Uh, to be honest, too, that it is a uh, Uh, actually, what you are asking about is how the steroidotoxin uh, can clear about the lower body antibody titer, right? No, no, I mean, uh, could, uh, could this drug will affect many kind of uh, different immunogenic type uh, subtypes of breast cancer, or it just could affect one uh, subtype of uh, resistance breast cancer? Because when we learn about resistant, uh, when we learn about the resistant breast cancer, uh, breast cancer is something that has many different uh, uh, immunogenotyping. That's why we, we now, in, in a clinic in a, a well-established uh, hospital, we, we will differentiate the patients based on the immunogenotype. That's, that's why I, I asked that, that question. Do you think that this PGP will be different, uh, uh, express, will be uh, different expressed in different uh, immunogenotype uh -huh. breast cancer or not? Actually, it is because why? Because the tetrodotoxin itself is only uh, binding with the PGP itself because the 90% of the resistance <coughs> is caused by uh, it has been uh, it has been shown that it induced PGP production. So it's only it only works on the resistance based on the PGP, which is caused by the PGP. I know to uh, add some my answer. Uh, yes, um, breast cancer has many subtypes, and in this paper we focus about the MDA MB293 cell line. Okay. Do you know what, what, what kind of type is the cell line? No. <laughs> okay. Thank you for the question and the response. Thank you very much for the uh, presenter. So we will move on to the. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you for your for your nice lecture. Uh, uh, I I want to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Evi Duyanti. I'm from Faculty of Public Health, University of Indonesia. Now I want to uh, I want to deliver my paper presentation. It's about. Bolayur, uh, Baksolo Vegetables. Uh, an innovation product of unique, exciting, and full of nutrition of bakso. Uh, uh, I have uh, five outlines. 
There are interaction, materials and methods, results and discussions, conclusions and references. And let's start to the introductions. Uh, maybe for the first, I want uh, all of you have the uh, same perception about Bakso. Why I, uh, why I don't use uh, Bakso in English, uh, meatball like that? Because uh, the paradigm in the society is that form of Bakso is round or meatball, uh, like ball and the contents is meat. So uh, Bakso in English uh, call, is called uh, meatball like that. And I want to, I want to, what is that? I want to deliver that. Uh, in this product, bakso will be created in love, shape, or heart, and the most contained with sa some vegetables uh, that can be united with the other uh, of ingredients of bakso and keep the value of adequate nutrition. Uh, I want to, I want to tell about the definition of football. Uh, for the KBBI KBBE, or Indonesian Dictionary, meatball is a food made by meat, fish, or shrimp that is cooked and pulverized and then mixed with flour and sipped the brown or ball. And uh, from the encyclopedia, meatball is a generally spherical mass of minced meat and other ingredients such as bread or breadcrumbs, minced onion, various spices, and possibly edge, usually fried in a pan or baked in an oven. So, uh, what, what is uh, meat? Actually, uh, meat that used in bakso is good for our body because of its carbohydrate, carbohydrate protein, and lipid. But too much consume it will make a uh, human get some disease such cholesterol, obesity, stroke, and cancer. Because uh, from from the large studies uh, studies in England and Germany showed that the possibility possibility of vegetarians to get cancer risk of about 40% smaller than the eater meat. So uh, I, I think uh, it will better that we consume uh, vegetables too. So, next please. So the type of meatballs, uh, there are three types of meatball. There are uh, field meatball, fishball, and shrimp meatball. So I want to uh, I want to tell about the difference of the three types of the meatball. So uh, field meatball uh, like this. Uh, this is the generality of meatballs. Uh, film meatball. So uh, I I didn't use this uh, of this product. Like same generally of you uh, that you from Indonesia is like this. You can mix with noodles and the shape is a uh, uh, round or like ball. And you can uh, put uh, like soybean soybean to the to this product. And then next. For the fish ball, the, uh, the texture is more uh, smooth and the color is uh, white, not like the previous field meatballs, the, the color is uh, rather gray. And then uh, this is stream meatball, you, uh, the, the texture is uh, the color uh, uh, is red and you can and it can be served with uh, shrimp. <coughs> so uh, why I why uh, I use uh, bakso law vegetables? Because the first, not all of people like vegetables, especially the children. And then I want to reduce it to con uh, uh, to reduce the con to consume meat, and then making the diversifications of food and making people healthier. Uh, for the materials and methods, preparations and plans. Uh, for the fields, uh, there are two preparations and plans. There are field ob observations and laboratory, laboratory observations. Field observations conducted to 
but a bit to determine the price and quality of the manufacture of these products. And the laboratory observations is uh, to conduct the determine of the nutrition of this product. And then uh, the second is developed the contents of bakso that are carrots, potatoes, and corns. And then for the analysis of products is sensory test and laboratory test. For the productions, we will de uh, I will develop the bakso shape is loaf and the content is vegetables. And for the explanations process, uh, like other or uh, like generally product of bakso, there are beef, flour, garlic, pepper, and salt. But uh, for this product, will you, I will use the contents of bakso are carrots, potatoes, and corns. And uh, it will be served with pepper cup to reduce the using of plast uh, like plastic or maybe uh, to uh, without without use like ball like that. Uh, this is the nutrition table: different meat and carrots, potato and corns. Actually, uh, meat, meat uh, and the other uh, vegetables uh, they have uh, it it has uh, difference uh, nutrients of meat, carrots, and uh, potato and corns. And then like this, uh, for the meats, uh, 5 to 84, for the carrots, uh, nothing, and potato, uh, all 0.65, and for the corns, is the, the best nutrition of the corns. This is two um, for the nutrition. Next. Yes. This is for the mineral macro of the bag. So, so uh, we can uh, we can conclude that uh, I, if we if we uh, total the nutrients of the bag. So for the meat, if uh, I used 50-50 for meat and uh, vegetables, uh, for the bag. So that use uh, vegetables have um, more more and more uh, nutrition of the bakso. And the results and discussions. Uh, for the first, the innovations of this bakso can be realized and apply, applied in the long run. And we can get, uh, we can get approval from the food and drug supervis supervisory agency or BAPOM from Indonesia and Halal certifications. And the third, to promote health care of the people and making them uh, have an adequate nutrition. And the last, ma making people, especially the children, like vegetables. And for conclusions, Bakso Love Vegetables is an innovation of Bakso using vegetables best ingredients and the shapes is love or uh, heart and these products can offer people a healthy food, uh, cheap and good quality. This is the references and uh, thank you. Uh, Thank you very much. So, is there any question? Propositions of maybe uh, 
Yes. Uh, for the proportions of the this bakso is, uh, I I use 50-50 for meats, uh, like this. 50-50 for meats and carrots. And then uh, meat and potato, and then meat and corn. Uh, if we use, like, we can, uh, we can imagine that mean meat is two, uh, twice, two times uh, use this, uh, this total. Uh, I total it the the total of meat is uh, six six hundred thirty nine point twenty eight for the total, and then uh, that we use carrot. We can we can carrot fifty and meat fifty, and then we, we can uh, I can total it uh, for uh, for uh, four thousand and twenty uh, two hundred and Twelve point fourteen, uh, and then for potatoes, uh, the normally and meat five uh, fifty percent. I can total it in eight uh, hundred and seven point forty nine, and for the corn and meat for the fifty and corn fifty, uh, I can total it. Uh, Eight hundred and forty-five point seventy-four. So uh, I can uh, conclude it that uh, for this product, the the best nutrition uh, is that we uh, I use carrot and meat. Uh, difference like difference very difference that uh, I use just meat in twice like that. And for the uh, for the using, I use like fifty fifty for the for this product like that. Uh, my name is Teddy from Bawijaya University. Uh, the problem that still remains on using vegetables on meatballs actually is it possible to maintain that vitamin? on the high temper of temperature. Mm -hmm. uh, did you just cook it or maybe fry it, bake it or steam it? Is it uh, possible to maintain that vitamin? Yes. Uh, I have uh, I have cook uh, I have uh, to produce it that uh, there is a little like a little obstacles to use like uh, the vegetables and uh, we, we uh, I just uh, I still can't to produce it but for the maybe for the carrot potato and corn uh, I still to wait for the for them to produce uh, maybe like uh, make them to uh, dry for that dry first and then uh, I mix it with the meat so uh, it's not too difficult to make the to make this product and it's uh, it's possible to to do these products because uh, uh, once I I ever to uh, make the make them and to deliver in my faculty. I mean, uh, I mean, after you cook it, uh, the nutrition fact is still this. It's not changing, right? Mm -hmm. Oh. Uh, actually, why I use carrot uh, and the uh, and the other vegetables? Because uh, I think for the first, I think that uh, t uh, three of uh, those vegetables is can use for the long time. And uh, for the first, it's my paper is just for from the literature, and I uh, 
I haven't uh, bring it to the laboratory to know the to know the nutrients. So uh, it is just from uh, literature and why I choose it because uh, it can use for a long time and uh, not like maybe for not like other vegetables that are uh, maybe just can use for the uh, uh, one uh, one hours or maybe two hours like uh, like um, like uh, uh, spinach like that. Uh, 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 this uh, my 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 intense why I choose carrot is because of the time uh, because of the time to uh, produce it. We can use for a uh, long time, maybe just uh, until three uh, three days uh, like that because of the time. Okay, maybe uh, just uh, to get suggestions. Maybe it's better if you can also add the other vegetables. Thank you very much for the presentation and the question. Now, Stratocos mutants and actually uh, based, on, based on the literature study, it proved that propolis can inhibit all the work of the bacteria. So, so for this research, we just test to the Stratocos mutants, uh, which is one of the most threatening bacteria to the mouth ecology. And it's proven to be can it, it's proven to can inhibit that bacterial growth. And for the production target, for the production production target, actually we we have planned to uh, market this product first to a uh, pharmaceutical store and relation uh, cooperation with uh, dentist dentist and uh, yeah, then every dentist. So uh, this we 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 have uh, we will we will um, what is it? Um, okay, yeah, we will uh, we 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 want to have um, trust uh, trust on people uh, that recommend uh, that uh, dentist will will recommend this product. Uh, to the market first. So uh, after that, we 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 will uh, we will sell it uh, sell in the uh, general store. Uh, uh, the target product uh, target market is um, uh, uh, all uh, all people uh, with no 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 segmentation. Uh, I think no segmentation uh, market will. Uh, I mean, almost all people will uh, can uh, consume this product. So what is the additional food? Okay. Additional food. Uh, uh, actually, uh, to make this ca uh, candy, we just uh, need uh, uh, basic ingredient of hard candy that sure uh, glucose, sucrose, and and water, of course, uh, and the, uh, the tip is propolis itself uh, and honey. Yes. Um, uh, we have tested it. Uh, just uh, not just uh, not just in uh, uh, most bacteria in ordinary people, but also the. Uh, uh, Bacteria which contain in um, suffer mouth with candidiasis and Streptococcus mutant isolate, and uh, it proved and uh, this candies uh, inhibition uh, is uh, the result in uh, in other uh, in other uh, research uh, is better than other propolis heart candy similar propolis heart candy that uh, that sold uh, in other countries.
So the basic difference between the local propolis and the Brazilian propolis is uh, due to the like color, taste, and also the organoleptic testing. It can be seen from the organoleptic testing here that um, the, the propolis candy that used the Brazilian propolis is not really that preferable in the, in the community of Indonesia. Uh, whereas uh, our local propolis, our local, local propolis hard candy, is the most preferred one in, in our society. We already, uh, we, um, from the data we got, uh, the Brazilian propolis is quite bitter, but the local propolis is not really that bitter and it's quite really like, maybe like um, a herbs, it's like a, maybe most like a herbs, so it's quite still uh, better, it's like a way better and preferable uh, by our community, something like that. And for, uh, I'm sorry, for the tra target production, target market itself, I want to add my uh, friend's question, uh, my friend's answer. So, um, for the very first time, we will target it to the dentist. Like, uh, of course, if we want to tar market this product, at the first we have to like search it to the target market itself. And for the very first time, because this is uh, Calizivat, it's nutraceutical, not like just use uh, ordinary candy. So we first will, um, we over it to the to the dentist and also the hospital. And after this product already been blo been boom, uh, after that we, we also will target it also as the like the um, nutraceutical that um, could be transfer could could be emerged to the society something like that. <laughs>